So the product has actually been working in conjunction with the manufacturer that's in the Orlando area to uh, produce uh, hopefully affordable cells for boosting. Not loud enough? Okay. For boosting the uh, combustion efficiency of gasoline and, or diesel and internal combustion engines. Now, what this cell is designed for is uh, essentially low production cost. So this is a product that can be brought out at a very low price. That was my criteria because as many of you know, I'm not in this for the money. I wanted a product that could be produced at low cost so it could be released to the public and sold at low cost. So this company undertook the challenge and they developed a plastic cell that is like an injection molded process and the plates are actually molded inside. So the fabrication costs are quite low on this design. And we've been able to get the, the gas production levels up to well above what most booster systems provide. Uh, I've worked in conjunction with them. This is a, a modification of my design. These, this particular unit is a double. It's a two six series cells that are in parallel. There's 13 plates in here. And there's electrical connections. You have a common in the center and two outside plates. You can run it either in series at 24 volts or in parallel at 12 volts. This particular one was, was actually uh, cleansed and conditioned at 12 volts. Um, this unit produces, as, as he says, six to eight liters per minute at the, at the design operating current. Now, operating current, a lot of people ask, what is that? Well, that depends upon what you want for output gas. The controller that I designed for them that does work in conjunction with the cell allows you to set your idle production at whatever you want to set it at, whatever your engine needs for idle, and then the other control you set for maximum production at wide open throttle. This unit can connect to your vehicle's throttle position sensor and vary gas production between those two set points based on the throttle position sensor. Or if you don't want to do that, turn the third control and you can manually dial the control to adjust between your minimum setting, your idle setting, and your maximum setting. And even has an onboard display that shows you how many amps the system is drawing. Now, this of course is, is just a generic controller that I built for him. He, he actually had his machinist do the case and I built the electronics. They have actually a built-in OEM type system that goes in, mounts behind the bumper, and then you have a remote display unit that's inside the vehicle. Okay, so, um, so they've able, been able to, to meet the, the, the need. Now we have to see if we can get the price set point where we want it. Okay, they are, this has been kept proprietary and kept secret for a long time. We've been working on this together for about six to eight months. A lot of that early stuff was negotiations in, in trying to determine what he wanted to do versus what I wanted to do and try to come to a, a compromise because he knew he, and he bought a lot of these other systems that are out there and tested them and, and none of them met his expectations. So then he, he built you know, one of my series cell designs and found that that met his performance needs. But we had to make it so that it was easy to use for the average person. They just turn the key on and they drive, because this is installed by a professional installer and set. And once it's set, all you do is add water to the fill tank. Everything else is automated. Uh, that I don't know yet. Our target price was $800 for the system plus installation. That, that's the cell, the controller, and all of the associated accessories that go with it to connect it into the vehicle and interface it to the vehicle systems. Does it need a pump for the cell? This uses a pump, yes. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I can't answer that because I didn't witness it. Uh, this particular unit came off the production line two days ago. I was in, in uh, Tennessee two days ago, and I wasn't here. But I did see one, the other one, there's two of these that came off the line first 
that were on test. And I did see it running at, uh, it was running at between 10 and 12 liters per minute, ramping up and down. We were doing the, uh, the, the cleansing phase on that unit. What's that? This, this connects to a water tank, yes. Well, it has a filter in the system that keeps it clean. So and that's what it's designed for, so that the, the user doesn't have to do anything. This aggressive conditioning, it only takes two hours to do it. It's conditioned at 30 amps. So it only takes two hours to get rid of it. And it's 316 out, stainless steel. Uh, cross hatch handling. It's done on a time saver, by the way, automated machine. Yeah. When it comes out on the market, where would the installation take place? In Orlando? It would be probably at your local dealer. They're going to be working in conjunction with auto dealers, um, auto repair shops, large shops, and dealerships across the country. For any, um, any model vehicle? Well, the initial production run is, is targeted at the Ford F-150. The, the passenger car edition or version that has for some like smaller engines is a is a single cell version of this. This is a double cell. This is two cells in one box. The single cell unit is only about an inch thinner. It only has two terminals instead of three, and of course it draws less power, puts out less less gas. I I think uh, if I remember right, three to four liters per minute was the, the target turn on that. That's in the works. He has actually a gentleman that, uh, I don't know if anybody's heard of Super Chips, but uh, a fellow that started Super Chips here in the U.S. is on staff and he's developing uh, a special EIFE type device uh, to handle the, the newer vehicles, the, the newest OBD2, because the older, in George Wiseman style devices, they'll work okay on the older OBD systems, but don't work too well on the newer OBD2 systems. What's that? What year is OBD2 is uh, uh, 1996 and newer. What do you think the percentage of the gas increase mileage? I can only tell you what we did on the, the prototype vehicle, which is a 2008 Ford F-150, 5.4 liter uh, four-door, you know, the crew cab type. And we were getting 13 miles per gallon on that vehicle before the system was installed and after 25 miles per gallon. 